Yo ho, my name is Ray Zorin Book, and this is the third episode of how to make Doro Dango, where I make clay balls out of clay. This episode is going to be focused on how to make a perfect sphere. It's super difficult. Not really. I'm going to break this up into three steps. The third step is pretty clear. You take a bunch of clay, you roll it around in your hand, but then it gets more intense as step two and step three happen. Then you're like, whoa, I couldn't believe. Good thing I watched this entire video in its entirety. Whew. So anyways, let's get into it. Let's go. It's always good to get the air out of the clay. This is a good way to do it. Just slam it, smush it, crush it. Try to get as much air out as possible. That would be the first step. And just start forming it into a ball in your hand. And the thing is, the clay is really wet and formable right now. And that's no good. Because even if I put it on the ground, the gravity is going to pull the weight down and you're going to get a lump, right? So, the basic idea here is to just get what is close to a ball and the closer you can get it, the better because when I first started making these, I just kind of made, you know, I did a half-assed job and uh, I had to fix them all later, it just took a lot more time. So the closer you can get to a ball in the early stages, the better. But it doesn't look like I'm gonna do much better than this. Oh, look at that. Um, doesn't look like I'm gonna do much better than this at the moment. The idea is that um, we're gonna leave this sit for an hour or two hours. Then it's gonna become a little harder. Then we're gonna go over it again. Then a couple more hours go by, gets a little harder, we go over it again, a couple more hours, go over it again, and etc. This obviously isn't a good ball, but uh, I wanted to stop now just to show you, um, let's say you end up with a weird crack or like just a spot here that's open when you're done. We're going to fix all that. This one I made earlier out of just sand. And I don't think it's going to work. It shouldn't work. It, what, it should, what should end up happening is it should fall apart into a bunch of pieces. Oh, there we go. It just did. Uh, okay, so that's why you extract the sand out of clay so that doesn't happen. Okay, it's been a couple hours later and we're going to go check out uh, how these are doing. We're just going to keep rolling them into a ball basically. Uh, the idea here is that the longer the clay stays out, the harder the clay is gonna get. The harder the clay gets, the better you're able to mold it into the shape that you want. That's about good. I will come back in probably a couple hours and do this again. Okay, this is the last time tonight because I need to go to sleep. And, well, when I go to sleep and I wake up in the morning, these are going to be rock solid. So, this is the last chance to get them as round as possible for this step. These are the ones here. Uh, that we made earlier and as you can see they're quite a bit more solid and now they can be formed quite a bit easier so you probably won't be able to make them perfectly round at this step but if you can get them close enough that's all we're after okay well I only got about three hours sleep because I've been having problems sleeping lately um, you ever get that feeling in your legs like you have way too much energy like you could kick someone through a 
glass window off a three-store balcony because they said that your album sucks over on Reddit? Well, that's the problem I've been having. Life got cold in my attic. I can't keep it. Will you take it? I've got a ghost in my attic. I can't keep it. Will you take it? I've got a ghost. But on the upside, I'm able to come back and uh, form these Doro Dango balls one last time before they get too hard. So we should be able to make them really good now. All right, that's pretty good for now. Uh, I'm gonna try to go back to sleep and I will see you again in a little bit. All right, so it's the next day and here are our balls, our balls. Uh, still a tiny bit pliable actually, which is kind of good. Kind of try to even shape this just a tiny bit more but overall, they're looking pretty good. Okay, so for step two, you're gonna need a little jar like this. Something that the uh, ball can kind of sit on, just like that. So the idea here is we are gonna add and subtract clay to make this a perfect sphere. Okay, for this next part, you're gonna need some dry clay. And you're gonna need some like dust like clay not chunks like this so i'm going to take this glass here i'm just going to crush this clay up try to turn it into dust then i'm going to use a strainer strain out all the small little dust particles Okay, so now we have some fine ground up uh, clay. Now you want to get some water. This bowl already had some clay in it, uh, which doesn't matter. That's why it looks a little dirty. Uh, but you want to get your balls wet. Get this wet. Now we're gonna go over here. And we are going to Drop some of this powder all over it. Now we're going to take this jar and we're just going to go around it like this. And the concept here is that the powdered clay that we put on there is going to fill up all the little holes. And because the surface is a little wet, hopefully we'll grind away some of the parts that are sticking out. And at this stage, might want to even get it mucky looking. I like to dip it in the dirt or dip it in the water a second time, actually. Basically, get it looking like mud. So, what the jar does is it smoothens out the ball and any sections of the ball that were missing clay uh, will get filled up and any parts that had too much clay will hopefully uh, kind of get taken off. And you could tell if it's a perfect sphere if all the sides are aligned perfectly 
with the jar. So this is actually looking really good. So right here when I set the ball on the jar, you can see there's a little crack there uh, between the jar and the sphere, which means this isn't a perfect circle, which means we either need to add or subtract some. So I am going to dip in the water again. And without adding any more clay, let's see if I can actually get it wet enough that it will just uh, take away some of the sides and get it a little bit more sphere-like. So this is looking pretty good so far. So from the previous times of doing this, it seems like the best way is just kind of go over it and over it. And when you see a gap, then you uh, try to fill it up. And when you see like a chunk that's hanging out, you try to get, get it off using those two methods. And you should end up with a pretty good sphere. I like to clean this off too because if you get uh, clay that hardens on this area, then it's gonna mess up your Doro Dango when you're working on it. Okay, so it's the next day and uh, I was working on these a little bit. I'm um, starting to get to the point where you try to make them glossy and I've never ever ever uh, gotten this down perfect. I've gotten little bits of it, uh, for example here, as I've shown you, uh, it's starting to get a little glossy. Anyways, I took one to the bedroom to work on while I watched a movie last night and voila! Now this is not perfect, but it's probably the best I've ever done uh this far uh this is the reason why i usually end up painting them and then varnishing them because i can never uh get it completely glossy but this is all completely clay or dirt uh, there's nothing added so that's why i really like i would really like to be able to do it this way because this is the way that it's actually supposed to be done it's but I'm still learning. However, I am getting better. And I think these spots that aren't so glossy, I think I just need to fill them in with some clay. The problem is when you start filling in with clay, you will mess up some of the stuff that you already done, then you have to do it again. Uh, so I don't really like that part. Um, okay, so, you know, I'm not, super excited about how I explain things or what I filmed. Uh, the problem is a lot of it is just repetition and just uh, going over it and over it and over it. So I kind of decided the best way to make this video is just show you the different methods you can use for making a perfect round circle and uh, hopefully you can apply it to whatever you're doing, if you're making Doro Dango or if you're uh, just making a ball for some reason. <laughs> uh, so even though, you know, this doesn't really look perfect and I gotta go over a few sections here, uh, but I've already shown you uh, the methods I would use to go over these sections and I really wanna finish this video and not spend another week filming. <laughs> So I'm gonna end the video right here. Hope you got something out of this. If you did, subscribe, smash the like, hit the bell, do all the stuff, and I'll see you again on another video extremely soon.